Welcome back. So we're going to continue looking at our circular motion now with a few questions. All right, so first, what's our strategy here? How are we going to approach these questions? All right, well, first you want to have all the equations handy, okay, especially uh, F net equals M V squared on R. You also want A equals V squared on R, and you also want V equals 2 pi R on T. Those are the ones that you want to have when we're doing these uh, questions. Step number two is to try and figure out what your circular path actually is. Okay, so especially when we start doing questions involving cars driving on banked sections of road, then figuring out where the center of the circular path is becomes a little bit confusing. Okay, but first you should just try and identify what the actual circular path is and what it looks like. Okay, so try and visualize that object moving over time and tracing out a path in space and then try and visualize where that center of that circle is. All right, so that's two. Three, this is something that you should always do with force problems is to set up your coordinate system, set up your positive and negative directions so that the net force points horizontally or vertically. Okay. Um, We've done that before. We'll see how it looks in these kinds of questions in a second. Okay, draw a picture, draw your forces acting on an object, and then resolve any forces into components that need to be resolved. And then you can start thinking about how you're going to set up your net force equation and solve for your quantity. Okay, but really, really important, identify the center of the circular path. Okay, visualize that object moving in space and tracing out a circle and then set up your coordinate system appropriately so that the net force points either directly horizontally or directly vertically uh, according to your coordinate system. Okay. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got a ball of mass 200 grams is tethered to a string 1.5 meters long and hit with a bat. The ball travels in a circular path such that the angle the string makes with the pole as shown is 60 degrees. There we go. Okay, so part A is calculate the tension in the string during the ball's motion. All right, so let's let's first figure some things out here before we actually start looking at the forces involved. Okay, here you can see this red dotted line. That's the circular path of the ball. We don't have the radius of the circular path, okay? And most of the time, you're going to have to have the radius available to you if you want to use your net force equation because F net, remember, is equal to mv squared on r. Okay, you need the radius. So what is the radius? Well, notice this is just going to be oops, a right angle triangle. 90 degrees, that's 1.5 meters, 60 degrees. You want to work out this length here, which is the radius. Okay, and if you remember your trig, that's going to be uh, 1.5 times sine 60 in this case. All right, and we get a value of 1.3 meters, roughly. Okay, so just make sure you know what the radius is and try and calculate it if it's not given to you. Okay, so let's think about the forces acting on this ball. All right, well, obviously, there's always going to be gravity acting on stuff. So gravity points straight down. Let's call that FG. And there's also the tension in the string. So the tension is acting up this way. I'm going to label that FT, it's the tension. And in which direction is the net force pointing? Well, we've got to remember the net force points towards the center of the circle all the time. Okay, and according to this picture, the center of the circle is directly to the left of the ball at this part of its motion. Okay, so the net force is going to point that way. So that's F net which means we should set up our coordinate system so that to the left is a positive direction and we'll keep up as the positive direction as well. Okay, so remember you can define your coordinate system however you like so long as the net force points either in that positive direction or in that positive direction, up or sideways or down, okay, but not at some weird angle. All right, 
So let's break this tension force into components and see what we can do with the components when we analyze. Okay, so if that angle there is 60, then this angle here must be 60. They are alternate angles. And this hor uh, sorry, vertical component will be the tension Ft times cos 60. And the horizontal component will be the tension Ft sine 60. Okay. Now, what are we trying to work out? Okay, so part A calculate the tension in the string during the ball's motion. Well, notice that the net force is completely horizontal. There is no component, oh sorry, no vertical component of the net force, which means that the forces in the vertical direction are all going to add up to zero. Okay, so let's write that out. The sum of the forces in the vertical direction, which is going to be, if we defined up to be positive, it'll be Ft cos 60 minus the negative forces, so minus gravity. That's that's all, all the forces we've got, tension and gravity, and we know that adding them together has to give us zero because there is no net force in the vertical direction. So what that tells us is that if I solve for tension here, all I'm going to get is gravitational force divided by cos 60. There we go. All right, let's work out the gravitational force. So just mg, mass is 200, 0 0.2 kilograms. And g is 9.8. And we're dividing that by cos 60. Okay. And we get a nice little answer of 3.92 newtons. Okay. So quick recap. We've decomposed our forces into components and we've noticed that because there is no net force in the vertical direction, that means when I add up all the vertical forces, they should add up to zero. Okay, and that's what I've done here in this first equation here. And then our job was to solve or calculate the tension. So I know Fg, I can calculate cos 60. All we've got to do is solve here for tension and we get 3.92 newtons, okay? Part B says, calculate the speed the ball must be traveling. All right, so how can I relate speed to the stuff that I've got in uh, my question? Well, let's look up here, the equation. Net force is equal to mv squared on r. Do I know m? Yes. Do I know r? Yes. Do I know f net? Not at the moment, but maybe we can work it out, okay? So let's go back and look at our picture. We know the net force is completely horizontal. That means when I add up all the forces in the horizontal direction, they should give me the net force. Okay, so let's add up all the forces in the horizontal direction. So what do we got? Well, we've really only got this horizontal component of the tension, and that's it. There are no other, no other horizontal forces involved here. So that means the net force is simply just equal to that component of tension. All right, now do we know tension? Yes, we've calculated it in part A. So we can actually work out the net force now. It's going to be 3.92 times sine 60. Okay, and that gives us a net force of, I do not believe I have worked it out. I've gone straight to the end in my own calculation. So let's work it out together on your calculator. Ready, set, go. 3.92 times sine 60. And we get a nice little number there. 3.39 newtons. Okay. So we've worked out the net force. Now we should be able to work out the speed of the ball using F net equals mv squared on R. So if I've got F net equals mv squared on r, then that means that v is equal to the square root of F net times r over m, okay? 
we know F net, we know R, we know M, let's put all that in. And then we get an answer roughly of 4.7 meters per second. Okay, so in order for the ball to be traveling in this circular path around this pole attached to this particular string, it has to be moving at 4.7 meters per second. Okay, so go back and review the question, watch it again, try and work it out yourself. Okay, so we can actually, for that particular kind of situation where you've got an object attached to a string like that at some angle, we've got a shortcut, okay? So for an object mass m tethered to a string swinging around in a horizontal circular path of radius r at which the angle between the string and the vertical is theta. Okay, so you've got, there's your pole, there's the string, there's the ball, there's theta. Okay, circular path goes around like that. Okay, so that distance there is r and the ball has a mass m. Okay, if you have this particular situation, then you can calculate the net force straight away just by using this here. Why? Well, think about how we calculated the net force in the other question here, okay? Net force, that's what we did at the start of part B, is equal to the tension multiplied by sine 60. Okay, go back and figure out how we set that up. And then previously in part A, we worked out that the tension is equal to gravitational force divided by cos 60. Now, if I combine that, Fg over cos 60 multiplied by sine 60, we get F net is equal to Fg over cos, we'll just use theta here, times sine theta. Well, this sine theta over cos theta turns into tan theta, and therefore you get the net force is equal to mg, which is just the... Fg, gravitational force, times tan theta, okay? Um, now, if you want to calculate the acceleration, just remember that the net uh, acceleration is net force divided by mass. So if I divide all of this stuff by mass, all that's going to happen is that mass up there will cancel out and I'll be left with g tan theta, and that's what we get here, okay? Um, the tension, well, the tension is exactly how we calculated it in the question. It's going to be gravitational force divided by cos 60. Um, if it's just an angle theta, then it's mg over cos theta. The velocity comes from here when we calculated it in part b. Okay, so if I've got f net, remember f net is equal to mg tan on theta. So v equals f net r over m. If I substitute this expression here for f net into my velocity, I get square root of mg tan theta times r and divide all that by m. And the m's cancel out and I'm left with g r tan theta. Okay, so just a few shortcuts that you can use for this particular example. Um, it's worthwhile writing that down somewhere. Now, one last thing. Um, we did touch on an example before in the last question, uh, not last question, the last video, uh, where one of the examples was the object a satellite orbiting the Earth. Okay, that is circular motion. In reality, it's not a real circle. It's actually what we call an ellipse, but it's so close to a circle that for all intents and purposes, for just general sort of non-critical um, non calculations, I guess you could say, we can consider it to be a circular motion. All right, so... Objects in orbit are an example of circular motion, so satellites orbiting the Earth, the Earth orbiting the Sun, things like that. And it's gravity that is providing that centripetal force, that centripetal acceleration. Okay, and there's no other forces acting on the object. Okay, so that's really important. If an object is in circular motion in orbit around something else, so Sun, Earth, it is literally just gravity that's making it go around in a circle, nothing else, okay? We'll, we'll talk about where this gravitational force comes from, how it sort of 
travels from the sun to earth. We'll talk about that when we talk about fields. Okay, but it is just circular motion. Treat it like any other kind of question. Okay, we'll have a break there. See you in the next video.